Hello students, welcome to Legacy AIS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about a term that is in use, that is the porcupine strategy of Taiwan, which Taiwan has unveiled to fight China if China attempts to invade or take control politically of Taiwan. So in this particular video, we are going to discuss in details what is this porcupine strategy is all about and whether this strategy is enough to deter China from invading or attacking the Taiwan. So first of all, the context and why all these things is in news, this issue is in news because recently China has launched a very aggressive and unprecedented kind of military exercises near the Taiwan Strait in response to the recent visit of US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan despite China saying that such a visit will hamper US-China relations and also it is akin to playing with the fire. This recent aggressive and unprecedented military exercises was such in nature that it has entered uh, the missiles fired by China actually has entered into the exclusive economic zone of even Japan and also it has violated the territorial waters of Taiwan itself. Beijing claims since a time immemorial Taiwan as its own part and that is why it has a longer term objective of merging Taiwan with the mainland China. The long range live fire drills began with the China's Eastern Theater Command firing several ballistic missiles, as just we discussed right now, which have fallen into the waters of Taiwan as well as Japan. And in response of these live military exercises, Taiwan also have said that it is and its military space is preparing for a war without seeking the war. That means if China attempts to invade Taiwan, then Taiwan is well prepared to fight. However, unilaterally or from its side, it will not try to do anything or will not try to attack. China. So before going into details about this particular strategy, let us try to understand the geographical location of Taiwan vis-a-vis -vis China. So as we can see, this red area is the mainland China and just slightly separated by few hundred kilometers that is called as Taiwan Strait, the waters of Taiwan Strait is we have a tiny island country almost similar to the size of Kerala in India in the South China Sea that is part of Pacific Ocean. And as we can see around Taiwan, if you go on the northern side, we have East China Sea where we have South Korea and Japan, two allied nations or US partner countries. While if you go to the south of Taiwan, then we have another important uh, US ally country that is the Philippines. And then on further toward east, west, we have a Vietnam that is also having a kind of a one of kind of relation or we can say have a conflicting relation with China as far as the control of its exclusive economic zone is concerned. So what basically you can say that right in the north, west and east, China is being uh, covered or China is being surrounded by many tiny countries which are basically allies of United States and that is why as we can see US has a lot of bases around these areas as well. For example, in South Korea, US has military bases, in Japan they have military bases and two portions first on the western coast and also on the eastern coast. Similarly, they have military bases in the small island countries such as Guam that is in Pacific Ocean and also in the Okinawa region that is part of Japan. So basically, this is the whole geographical area geography of Taiwan vis-a-vis -vis China. Now why Taiwan is geographically important for China? So this has been uh, actually explained by a very well-known uh, international relations expert Dr. Gino Leone from London University and he has said that location of Taiwan matters why because China already has a very great military influence over the South China Sea. However, if it has also the control over the island of Taiwan, it would allow the Chinese military, the People's Liberation Army to expand further their naval influence and they will have a complete control of the trade routes as well, uh, which is passing through the South China Sea and East China Sea region. And Taiwan is basically for China is nothing but a kind of missing link for China to cement its defense of any conflict in the South China as well as East China Sea. Because again, if you look at the geography, what we can see, China is also having conflicting claim with some of the islands of Japan, where Chinese call it Senkaku Island and uh, Japanese call it Senkaku Island, while Chinese call it Diao Island. Similarly, they have other conflicting uh, we can say conflict regarding the ownership of island in the South China Sea with the Philippines such as Sprathli Island and uh, Sprathli Island we have Scarborough Seoul is there, Paracel Islands are there. So that is why in future if conflict emerges with these countries and US uh, comes to help these countries in that case if China has a control over Taiwan then its naval superiority will exceed further and will become much more stronger than right now. So that is why China is very akin in gaining control of the Taiwan, both politically as well as from the defense perspective. 
So what is the porcupine doctrine that Taiwan is focusing upon to deter China from such aggressive posture? So the first of all, the porcupine is nothing but a small animal as you can see from this particular picture, which has a lot of thorny or we can say kind of pointed uh, structure is there. And if some large animal try to attack this porcupine, that case porcupine tends to move in such a way that these uh, thorny or we can say this uh, fine shaped needles can prick these large animals and can deter them from attacking the porcupine. Similar kind of strategy also is being followed by Taiwan. So first of all this strategy was talked about in year 2008 by US Naval War College Professor William S. Murray. So basically this particular doctrine is nothing but example of asymmetric warfare that is focused on fortifying a weak state's defenses. For example, if you compare the military capabilities of China and Taiwan, we can basically understand China is having a such humongous force as compared to Taiwan. And in numerical terms, obviously, Taiwan cannot hold off any attack by China. And that is why they have to prepare for the asymmetric warfare where they have to exploit the enemy's weakness rather than taking on its strength. The numbers are the strength of People's Liberation Army. So basically Taiwan is focusing on the enemy's weakness or the weak areas of the China. This is very very similar to the current war that is going on between Ukraine and Russia where Ukraine is trying to focus on the weak links of the Russian army despite Russian army being a very large force as compared to the Ukrainian army. So how basically this strategy will work? So as per the statement given by the William S. Murray, he has said that Taiwan could be attacked and damaged, but if they properly follow this porcupine strategy, they could not be defeated. At least China cannot defeat Taiwanese military without unacceptable high cost and risk that their army will also have to go through. Similarly, Dr. Zeno Leone from London uh, College, uh, King's College London, he has said that the porcupine strategy is basically a three-layered strategy. The outermost layer relies on intelligence and reconnaissance, where by focusing on INR, the Taiwan milita Taiwanese military can be prepared for any kind of surprise attack by China, so they will be well prepared in that. The second layer, the intermediate layer, is made up of guerrilla warfare at sea with aerial support. For example, we know that Taiwan is nothing but islands surrounded by water from all the areas. So if China has to attack Taiwan, it has to cross the Taiwan Strait, that is, it has to cross the sea. And that is when they will try to land their troops in the coastline of Taiwan. And while doing so, the Taiwanese military can take example or take help of guerrilla warfare, where they can fire anti-sick missiles or they can fire uh, man portable defense system and such, with aerial support given by the United States and allies, such as helicopters and the fighter jets as well. And the innermost strategy, innermost layer of this particular strategy is focused upon geography and demography of Taiwan. The Taiwan has both mountainous terrain as well as they have very dense inhabited urban areas. So this kind of terrain, even if Chinese military is able to land their 20 to 25,000 troops that is expected, uh, their capability they have to land. So even if these troops enter Taiwan, land at the beach region of Taiwan, and then if they try to enter into the main region of Taiwan, in that case, the mountainous terrain and the highly urbanized area can be advantageous for Taiwanese. Because recently, if you remember when the February Russia invaded Ukraine, that times many people in the highly urban areas started preparing this Molotov cocktail. And a lot of these tanks were also destroyed by these Molotov cocktails because when you have this, all these people are trying to defend their own country. And if some enemy or the foreign army is trying to enter into the city, then from their own home itself, the people can attack and can significantly damage the capabilities of the uh, up on this uh, attacking army. So this is the three layered strategy that we can understand as porcupine strategy. First, INR that is intelligence and reconnaissance. Second is guerrilla warfare with sea support and aerial support. And third is taking advantage of geography and demography of the Taiwan. So basically, as I discussed, the porcupine strategy is nothing but an example of asymmetric warfare. So what is an asymmetric warfare? So asymmetric warfare is basically a type of warfare or type of war between belligerents or between two different uh, parties whose relative military power differs significantly. As discussed just now, Chinese have a much larger number of military uh, in all the dimensions, army, air force and navy as compared to Taiwan. And that is why the strategy or tactics for uh, fighting will be very, very different, will not be similar in nature, but will differ significantly. So such kind of warfare is called as asymmetric warfare. And asymmetric warfare is basically based on asymmetric systems. So what are the asymmetric systems? 
Asymmetric systems can be defined as a small, numerous, smart, stealthy, mobile, and hard to be detected and countered system, which are also associated with innovative tactics and employment. The example of such asymmetric systems can be the mine layer SIPs. For example, Taiwan has surrounded by water from all the sides. So it can use the SIPs for laying the mines around these waters. And when Chinese military or Chinese Navy try to move through these Taiwanese Straits, then their SIPs can be simply blown off by these mines. Similarly, the other example of such systems can be Harpoon Coastal Defense Cruise Missile System. That means if the Chinese trying to come to Taiwan via air uh, through using the air force, in that case, the coastal defense cruise missiles can also destroy the aerial target. Similarly, we have a Stinger Man Portable Air Defense Missile that is Man Pads Calling Shot. This is something that has been very much widely used in Ukraine by Ukrainian military and that has destroyed significantly the capabilities of Russian army to use its aerial uh, air forces. So that is something that also that we use. Apart from that, we also have missile corvettes, small, small missile corvettes that is fast attack uh, ships that can be uh, patrol that can be patrolling the Taiwan Strait and can counter the Chinese Strait coming from the mainland side. So these are some examples of asymmetric system with the help of which uh, Taiwan will be able to uh, wage a kind of asymmetric warfare and will be able to may be possibly able to deter the China from taking an aggressive stance. So what is the need of such a strategy for Taiwan? So as discussed just now, China was overwhelming military superiority over Taiwan. Second, from last uh, few decades, especially this thing has been risen uh, or this uh, posture of China has increased significantly after Xi Jinping came into power and they have become more vocal about the Chinese intention to reunite the island with the mainland by force or coercion if needed. So that is why Taiwan have to military prepare, prepared for such kind of surprise attack. And third, China also have since last few decades developing its nuclear capabilities. And as per the recent report by United States Congress, it is believed that Chinese nuclear capabilities and their nuclear uh, posture is such that they have initiated a new strategy of limited nuclear first use. Why this new strategy of limited nuclear first use? Because Chinese believe that if they have these capabilities and if they show their this particular strategy, then the US will be not willing that much to support uh, Taiwan if war is waged by China. Because in US and China, China will come in direct confrontation and there will be a very high risk of nuclear catastrophe. So these are the reasons why Taiwan has to develop certain strategies to deter China. However, the challenges for Taiwan are also numerous. The first challenge is the defense spending of Taiwan as of now is not in line with porcupine strategy. Again, to remind you, porcupine strategy is a strategy of asymmetric warfare, which depends on development of asymmetrical systems. However, the defense spending of Taiwan is still heavily on the conventional weapons where obviously Taiwan cannot encounter, cannot defeat China. So that is something that also we have to understand about and Taiwanese military will have to change their stance on this particular areas. And third, the resisting steps to adopt a more asymmetric posture, that is the main problem in Taiwanese military because many Taiwanese top military brass, top military leaders are resisting steps by the civilian government to adopt to more asymmetric posture and they still want to invest and significant uh, investment they want to do in the conventional weapons area. However, they also have a, a point regarding this and as per the recent statement, given by Ministry of National Defense of Taiwan. They said the reason why they are spending on development of conventional weapon because the statement they gave is that if we only train how to flee and hide, that is what porcupine strategy basically depend upon largely, that will shake morale of the Taiwanese military as well as the Taiwanese population. And that is why if they give up on developing their air force and conventional uh, this, uh, forces, the People's Liberation Army will win before the war has even started because it will so the defeatist attitude of the Taiwanese against the Chinese military. So that is why Taiwan and Taiwanese military especially insist on striking a balance between development of conventional weapon and the development of asymmetrical systems and the weapons related to asymmetrical warfare. So that is all about this particular issue. I hope you understood about what is the porcupine strategy is all about and how Taiwan is trying to deter China from invading it in the future by uh, talking about this strategy in general. So that's all for today. Thank you very much.